Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to do a little video about following Christ as opposed to following things of this world. Uh, we've all heard discussed that it's easier for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven than it is for the cam a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Um, now, different theological explanations have been made for this passage uh, from anything from the eye of a needle was only big enough. If the camel humbled himself, got on his knees, then it could pass through the eye of the needle, which was a gate into the city of Jerusalem, and it is the eye of the needle. Uh, the other thing was that um, uh, that um, <clears throat> that another analogy is going back to the Greek, which I am not a Greek scholar, but I have friends who are, is that the eye of the needle uh, in the Greek actually means halzer, like a rope uh, that is able to pass through the eye of a needle, which is also impossible. Uh, to get a halzer through the eye of the needle. So I'm using that as a scriptural reference this morning of, of uh, talking about worldly riches. <clears throat> now, another type of worldly riches who uh, I just spoke to my brother about, and uh, so this is, this is not my own, uh, Brother Justin, for those uh, of you who know who he is, uh, he was explaining to me that another type of worldly riches can be religious in nature. In other words, people that come to the point of salvation and knowing Jesus Christ say, I'm going to do something for the Lord. I'm going to anywhere from they're going to start a Bible study to I'm going to go to seminary and become a pastor or I'm going to build a church building, uh, this type of thing. So again, if they're not told to do that, if they're not led to do that through the Lord Jesus Christ and following Christ, then they've started to put away riches for themselves in a religious sense, okay? And that religious sense of building a, um, of building something for Jesus is also a worldly riches. And this is something that the Lord's been driving home to me lately uh, because you cannot follow the world, things of the world, whatever type of riches they are, and still follow Christ. You'll love one and hate the other. Um, and all through the scriptures, this is, uh, this is referenced right here, which I'm going to put in to this video. It says the cost of following Christ. And this is out of Matthew. Uh, now, when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. This is a religious person who recognized who Christ was. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds have of the air have nests, but the son of where man, son of man, excuse me, has nowhere to lay his head. What is Jesus saying? He's saying that he has nowhere that he can fit in to the world. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> he said, leave the dead to bury their own dead. The interesting about uh, thing about verse 21 is that the man's father wasn't dead yet. Okay. He was talking about uh, his inheritance, his estate, that he could let him go and first wait till his father died and he inherited his estate then he could be comfortable and he could follow Christ. All right, now, certainly 
that shows of, again, earthly riches. And the scribe, the teacher, I will follow you wherever you go, um, that's a religious person. And Jesus said to him, again, foxes have holes and birds have air, uh, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So this is this particular um, scripture is talking about just how hard it is to follow the Lord Jesus Christ from the things that we have in the world. Now, churches also can be competitive to our hearts following Jesus Christ, even good Bible-believing churches, because we can make an idol out of the church. We can make an idol out of the scriptures. Uh, today, I saw a post that talked about Satan if you carry a Bible with you, uh, that Satan will stay away from you. If you open it, Satan ducks his head. Well, that's totally ridiculous because you know why? Because Satan probably knows his Bible better than any man. Okay? And this is a very, very um, profound truth that I'm trying to uh, express today on this video. Now, you see I'm wearing my chaplain shirt, and I'm wearing my chaplain shirt to make those in religious communities feel just a little more comfortable with what I'm saying. Uh, I am an accredited chaplain through Dr. Weiser, uh, United um, uh, Association of Christian Chaplains and Counselors International, which is now Christian Ministries International. Um, so, you know, I have came from a reformed uh, background in my scriptural understanding. But this is this goes beyond denominations. It goes beyond your Bible understanding because I'm totally talking about following Christ and no, having no God higher than him. And the, the thing that mostly counterfeits following Christ is religion, church system, uh, systematic theology, which I'll call church. And I can no longer follow my Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, and follow church. Okay? Um, this is where the Lord has brought me to. He has whispered in my heart for years, come away from them. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Okay, and most of the people, they want to have one foot in the world and one foot in the Lord. And you can't do that because you'll love one master and hate the other. And um, so this is truly the cost of following Christ. And I'm, I'm using this biblical text as an example to support this morning my sermon, if you will, on following Christ and the cost of following Christ. So please understand, dear brethren, if you want to follow Christ, it's really going to cost you. It will cost you everything. It'll, co it'll cost you your status in the world. It'll cost you your you know, financial uh, uh, things of the world. It will cost you religious status in the world. Because in order to follow Christ, you must follow Christ. And that means putting everything else aside to follow him who is within you if you're truly born again. Now, the Lord has used the church in the centuries past, probably despite themselves, to, uh, to get the gospel out. He's used uh, pastors and ministers, uh, theological seminaries and this type of thing to, uh, to speak to people within a congregation, people congregating together to, uh, to preach the gospel. But I really believe that that itself has become an idol instead of following the Lord. And this is a very dangerous thing. And I believe that also many people that start out with the Lord, as I said in the beginning, uh, they want to do something for Jesus. You know, they want to have a young singles group where you can date young church women 
And I remember a woman told me that when I was dating my yet unsaved wife. And I wanted to say to her, has God told you to do this? Or is this something that you came up with? And so the Lord has been moving me away from uh, the structured church for some time in an effort to teach me very patiently that I must follow him. And I really feel sorry for people that have um, invested their whole lives into a particular church or a particular denomination because if the Lord moves you to move away from that, you cannot, not without great personal cost to you. And this is the reason that um, <clears throat> this is the reason that I come under so much attack today is because is because I'm expanding or I'm attempting to expand this truth to people. Well, God bless you, and remember to follow the Lord.